Welcome uh, to Tech Tuesdays, our new series where uh, we talk about everything tech. Um, so, wait, let's redo that. Let's do. I feel like you need to come in and I need to come in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you want to start off or I start off? You start off, I'll come in. What's up, guys? Welcome to our new series, Tech Tuesdays, where we talk about everything. That's where you come in, you say tech. Oh, tech. Yeah. This oh, you is want Tech me? Tuesday. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Welcome to Tech Tuesdays, guys. Um, it's a new series we're starting here where we are talking about tech. Everything. Everything tech. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So today we uh, we just got some brand new Blackmagic 6K studio cameras. Uh, Charles, we just got three new cameras. Yeah, so funny story is uh, we bought the 4K cameras for our studio to do the podcast. So if you saw the NBA vlog when we were opening those cameras and we overnighted them and we were super excited, well, it turns out the day we got the cameras, Blackmagic announced their new cameras, their new studio cameras. So we sent everything back and here we are. Shout out to B&H, they are super awesome when stuff like this happens, which it does happen in this industry. It we does. just wrote that like the new cameras came out. Obviously, like we put everything, we kept all the boxes, everything was great and they accepted the return. They actually sent us out the new ones and did the same shipping that we had on the original order. So they didn't charge us for the quick shipping as well. So shout out B&H, that was awesome. Yeah. So we have these new cameras. We're gonna open up this box. Let's rip it open. And show you guys what's up. That was really bad. I thought I was like gonna go in there. You do the, you have the executive. Safety second. <laughs> I think I just hit that camera, but whatever. Don't lose that paper. One. So we're like freaking excited. I think the main reason is these cameras are EF mount, so a lot of our cameras we use Canon here, and they're all they're all EF mount. And all right, well, let's go through the outside of the box. We have our front cover here, which is great. We went with the pro version because the pro version has things that we're going to need and use in the future. Um, our plan is to not just use these in here at our studio, but also take them out on location for some commercials and other things that we do that will work better as a multi cam set up. <laughs> For example, Ethernet port. You can power these cameras through the Ethernet port, do your live feed back, and then also uh, send your feed to the switcher, which is super amazing. Plus the two SDI inputs, has HDMI input on it. Um, it has the normal like crappy power 12 volt to power it. And then if you also wanted to, you can power it through four pin XLR, which is super amazing. Has two um, USB ports for hand controls or for recorders. Um, if you want it, I also loved in their video how you can hook this up to a cell phone and do a remote stream wireless, which is pretty so amazing. So can you use your cell phone as monitor? So, so like you can't use it as a monitor, but you can use your cell phone as the transmission device. Oh, it's a control panel, like start and stop and all that? No, like the wireless antenna. So you can hook your phone up to it, mm -hmm. and it becomes a 5G Whoa. router, essentially. And then your switcher, so you could be here in the studio, have your cameras out on remote location, and then have all your cell phones plugged into your cameras. That is freaking cool. It's pretty freaking rad. Anyways, Garrett, I think it's Garrett, Black Magic, dude. Shout out, Garrett. Uh, it's not Garrett. I just shout out everyone you say. If you say a name, I'll shout them out. Black Magic. Shout out Black Magic. <laughs> Charles. Shout out Charles. Yes. Tyson. Shout out Tyson. Yes. You can keep that going, and I'll keep it going. <laughs> Alex. Shout out Alex. Evan. Shout out Evan. Julian. Shout out Julian. <laughs> All right, back Mer. to the camera. Shout out Mer. <laughs> All right, back to the camera. <laughs> Um, uh, it's got a really big screen on it with the knobs, which are super easy to use. If you guys have ever used the uh, studio camera before, uh, these are pretty rad. My favorite part is the red light on top, uh, just because it's a studio camera. And whenever you're in like a newsroom or something, you always see the cameras with the red lights. And this is like a compact version of that. So we're really excited to have three of these for our podcast and have the running lights going and just, I don't know, I feel like that's a cool vibe. It's fun. Uh, it also turns green, too. <laughs> like the light turns green? Yeah. Oh, like standby mode and then red. Yeah. Recording? That's pretty cool. 
Uh, well, I already unwrapped one, so let's jump into this. Cool. Thing. Switch me. We'll put these over here and just dive into one, yeah? Yeah. All right. So first and foremost, instruction manuals. No one reads those. Uh, wait, hold on. Wait, get that back. Okay. This is one thing I love about black magic cameras, you guys. Oh, is... shit. Yeah, actually, this is really <laughs> important. Don't see this. Don't just throw shit. Yeah. Read through shit. I like my daughter. Um, <laughs> these uh, black magic's awesome because they give you a free copy of Resolve with anything black magic that you buy. Uh, and Resolve is pretty amazing. And if you don't know how amazing Resolve is, I would say hop into it. It's also free. So they have a free it's also version. a huge thing in this studio. Charles is, you know, black magic. I came from the Adobe background. Charles made me learn black magic. Charles <laughs> didn't learn Adobe, but it's okay. We're good. I know Adobe. I just don't color in Adobe. You I can like edit, color yeah. in Resolve, like real professionals do. All right, so... Uh, to the camera. Uh, I love how they actually put the rod mounts in these bases too, because it actually makes it for a compact design. You could throw a teleprompter on here, or if you need a studio map box, not really necessary with these cameras because they have built-in MDs. So yeah, I don't really see like a whole map box setup going on these unless you're running like a pearlescent filter or something. Give it a little look, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, also on the top is your little numbers um, for your camera assignments and they give you a packet of these little homies so you can throw it on the top and they have like eight of them or 20 of them i don't know they have a lot because i think the idea would be you could hook up up to eight to their eight channel mixer and more if you get a bigger mixer yeah so, so those are pretty handy we'll throw those on later don't throw that away oh. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna pull the camera. Here is the camera, and it is, it's a lot heavier. <laughs> it's a lot heavier than the uh, the 4K version. Is it? Oh, yeah. it's a lot bigger too. It looks like it, it comes is. out like another two, three inches. Yeah, it totally does. That's crazy. I love that, it looks a little more beefy. It's always cool going in the studio with beefier cameras. Yeah, so this, uh, which we love, has the Super 35 uh, sensor in it now because it has the bigger mount, so they were able to put a bigger sensor inside of it. Um, so it's essentially this, like the Pocket 6K that they yeah. have on the market? I mean, they haven't said it, but I would assume that it has the exact same sensor in it that the Pocket 6K has inside of it. So you're looking at 13 stops of dynamic range. Um, it shoots Blackmagic RAW with all the B-RAW stuff that comes with it, um, which is super rad. Obviously, you have to do that through USB-C port. That's right there, um, which is super cool. So they have this flip up hood, which I guess could be handy if you're filming outside. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're doing an outdoor event, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I like them, <laughs> I think they look cool. I may even rock them here in the studio. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's, what it's, it's cool. It's a studio camera, right? I like how all the controls are on the outside. Um, it comes right out of the box. Like, oh, something we should show though is the ND filters. Let's uh, let's hook up some power to this thing. Let's, let's get it going. going. Wait, got a little fish eye here. All right, so we got power plugged in. Scooter's gonna throw this fun fish eye on there, which, you know, why not? Why not? And We're then, using our 24 to 70 on our main camera. So. What's super rad, which I love, is physical switches. Um, so we'll go ahead and flip this homie on and right out of the bat it wants to know that we speak English and we do and there we go yes. <laughs> that's that's pretty freaking rad um, what is cool about this camera and maybe we'll, we'll show some like behind the scenes footage of, of uh, shooting something but you can control your lens functions from um, the camera because it is an EF mounted lens um, the screens are decent. They're not the brightest screens coming in at 600 nits, um, which for inside a controlled environment, they're great. You take them outside and maybe not so great at all. And that's where the sun hood comes in maybe, or maybe you mount something else that's brighter, like a small HD you on could, the top. You could mount an external monitor if you wanted. Uh, they actually do sell monitors for these, a big monitor that 
It's a little brighter, but they actually come in at like $1,500. So with a built-in monitor, I don't think it's necessary, but if you would like, they have that option. Wait, is this the 6K Pro, right? Yeah. It's 2,000 nits on the screen brightness. Oh, is it? I thought it was 2,000 nits, Charles! So, that's a little better. Damn. It's better than the 4K screen, so there's that, 2,000 nits. All right, we're Does gonna not look we're like gonna 2000? have to test that. I don't know. We should test that. What's this? That's your S stop. Oh, this screen brightens here. Which usually Wait. leave it at centered. Take the filament yeah, off. It Maybe it's a tinted filament. No, it's not tinted. No, oh, you're tinted. I don't know what I did though. So, anyways, it is brighter. I can tell it's brighter. Uh, I don't know. We'll take it outside and see. We're going to test that. Um, this is what's cool, though, about this camera. And part of the reason why I wanted to upgrade is right here. And you can watch the screen get darker. This is your ND button. And the built-in NDs. Oh, yeah. That is so rad. Uh, so let's look at the menu system here. That fish eye looks wild. Uh, dude, it's nuts. Um, dude, check this out. Six you can actually shoot in 6K... 5.3 and also Ultra HD. You couldn't so do that. If you don't want the 6K option, you can resolution or downsize your resolution to 4K. I wonder, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Giving yourself way more time on the card. So if you're like filming long podcasts or something and you don't need that 6K quality because YouTube, like, you know, you're good. So it does crop in though. Oh. So that's how they're getting the 4K um, is they're cropping in. And we'll show some footage of that. So why would something crop in? If you're going from 6K to 4K, is it cropping in on the sensor to 4K? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's okay. the same thing that RED does. I'm not a fan of it, personally. I just don't know why you can't just downsample. See the full the frame. Footage. You see the full frame and then just step it down to 4K. Yeah. Like, I don't understand why that is. Maybe it's like a processing thing that's inside the camera. Mm. My knowledge of that stuff I don't care <laughs> to fill my brain with those things, but <laughs> you guys can comment and explain Yeah, if you guys me. know, throw in the comments. If you want to. We're open to that. Um, but yeah, the idea is that instead of the 6K, it just crops in on the sensor. It's probably using less processing power, so they don't have to put as powerful as a processor inside of the camera. It makes it cheaper. That makes sense. Um, so, let's see. I haven't held it yet. It's beefy, huh? It's definitely beefy. Ooh. Definitely has a lot more front weight. So if you are planning on using these handles compared to the 4K, it is a lot of weight. So if you're planning on holding it all day, I don't know if I'd recommend that. I definitely would recommend would that. Do yeah. well, and that, so what, where I'm coming from is, what other purpose can you use this camera for, Charles? Nothing, it's a studio camera. I know, but <laughs> there are people out there like me that are gonna buy a camera and want to use it for things that it's not meant to be used for. Okay. Uh, and that being said, you could use this if you rigged it out right, other than inside of a studio. You could do a 4-pin, 12-volt power supply. Totally. You could do an external monitor. Rails. Slap this guy on there, put some rails on it. And you run, can mount, rig. run a mount on there. You can shoulder, shoulder mount it. Yeah. Um, it has two like kind of decent microphones on it for ambient stuff. Which is rad, but you could just plug in XLRs here and maybe 3D print some kind of something up. I was about to say, but I guarantee you nobody's going to be making cages for this thing or no. anything to attach anything to it. So No, if, maybe maybe that's something we look into in the future, though. Maybe we could, you know, make some Make our own mount up here that you could screw stuff to. But if you're looking at this camera for a multi-purpose camera, I would probably lean away for it from it. It's definitely a studio. Pocket 6K G2 is a good starting point if you're looking at something that's more versatile um, for inside outside kind of things, just an all around cinema camera. That's probably a, like where I would start or where I would point people to a first time cinema camera, if you will, or like a Z cam also um, is where I would go as well. But for, the, for a studio camera with, where we do you know, our podcasts and a lot of these videos, these cameras are going to be perfect for us and we're excited to show you guys how they look. And we do have a music video we are planning on using these cameras for. So 
We're actually shooting that inside a studio setting where we're gonna set up multiple of these cameras and use a live switcher and have the band perform multiple times and not only have the live switcher but a multi-cam shoot and uh, so we're excited for that. We'll shoot a bunch of behind the scenes, kind of let you guys know how these cameras work in that environment. So that was our Tech Tuesday and we'll see you guys 